Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends from the magnificent garden of Raymond Vineyards, the new Palmeray. I'm sitting virtually next to me. I feel the heat and the energy on this JCB Live of an amazing artist. Dear friends, I've had the pleasure to meet him only a month ago during one of the major events where he donated his time and creative art to the Salvation Army. We raised a lot of money, not only together, but he did through his art. And he accepted to come as one of the major painter of the 21st century. He comes from New Zealand, forgive me, has a little bit of an accent. We purposely avoided Sauvignon Blanc today. No reason to bring competition, but bring what the world puts us together. Oh, yeah. Look at that, yeah. there he is. <laughs> Tim Howe, dear friends, one of the most amazing landscape artists Cheers. in the world. And the world is in Napa Valley today. Absolutely, look at this, look at the weather. You can't beat it, it's, uh, this is fall. You know, look this at is it. fall. It is awesome. It is so awesome. as we start, we're going to look at each other in the eye and uh, toast. You and you're going to make a wish. I just did. My wish was that this painting one day ends up at Raymond Vineyards. Would it be great? Well, I think we can arrange that. There's <laughs> not a problem there. <laughs> so Tim, tell us about your journey as an artist, because this is always so exciting, dear friends. We live in a very unusual time where now is the time to decide in your life what's your passion and follow it. And you did exactly that, didn't you? Exactly. I did. I did. And how yeah. did you do that? How did you discover maybe at first your, your incredible talent for, for art? Well, growing up in New Zealand was uh, pretty amazing. And I left uh, literally 40 years ago and uh, created a, a small um, um, advertising marketing company down in San Diego, which was very successful. Uh, worked there for 20 years, but it was commercial. Mm. And I was longing to do something a little more creative. And I was, I, I met Patricia. She said, hey, I want you to start painting. We're going to go to France ah! and Spain and... The world we changes did, which with... We did. The world changed with a, Patricia. It was a leap of faith. It was an absolute leap of faith. In so, Patricia or in stopping a, a commercial little, agency? <laughs> <laughs> a little both. A little both. And uh, so we went there and we lived there for a year, actually, in Barcelona. And uh, so did all the, you know, traveled around the, the Mediterranean, seeing all the wonderful art that uh, these incredible uh, dynamic uh, painters had, uh, had, had loved so much about southern, you know, southern yeah. France and Italy and Spain. So it was, and uh, you were already a great painter at your leisure time. Yeah. You were not yet professional as right, such. Right, right, right. So that trip allowed you to become who you are today, a full-time artist. Absolutely. And what I wanted to do growing up in New Zealand was so much nature. I went, you know, nature was really the base of what I wanted to, to do. And uh, so the travel throughout Europe and also my, my life growing up in New Zealand it was, it was, it was, it was a no brainer. So I just started, started uh, traveling and painting throughout uh, Europe for a year. And, wow. And uh, it truly was, it was amazing. I did about 150 canvases and, uh, That's, that's yeah. uh, one every yeah, other day. Okay, pretty much. <laughs> and we did some travel as well. And, uh, Did you paint uh, Patricia as well along the way as portraits? So you uh, her in the landscape. She's a beautiful lady, she, by she the way. She is, and uh, not so much. I didn't have time. You see, I didn't have time. But uh, and uh, so, but uh, here we are today. And uh, that's very impressive. So, advise us. How do you follow your passion? How do you really make the decision? Because it all finds easy now retrospectively, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but how do you really decide to cut the cord of one life to build another? Give us what went through your mind as a great artist to, to believe into following your passion. 
Because that's a big right. deal. That is. That is. And it is quite tough because you're, you know, you've got to make a living, all that sort of thing. I had this commercial background, so I, I, you know, I knew I needed to make money. So let's go and paint paintings, do, you know, um, auction them off, do charities, move into the into the world of of, of enjoying myself yes. and also having people enjoy you know looking at, at my work and it was really something that um, just sort of came naturally and and, and how did your work evolve as people made comments to your work did you continue to be who you are or did you change your style as people made observation on your art well I think I did change you know my style throughout throughout the last 20 years of, of you know, painting full time. See, the birds See, are the with birds you. birds are <laughs> loving it, loving it. Um, yeah, and, and, and what I love doing is, is just the, uh, seeing the pleasure that people get from watching me paint. And every day I wake up and I go, yeah, I can go and paint. I'm painting today or tomorrow. If it's raining, eh, maybe I'll paint you know, another day. But I get to do it all the time. I don't have, I don't have the, the daily grind, so to speak, anymore. And, and how would you say, in the world of art, you define your style? Because, as you said, you keep it very consistent to landscaping, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But how, how do you define your style? Well, I think it's, it's, it's you know, with the landscape, it is, um, it's like... It's Monet-ish. It is softer. I'm, I'm pretty loose, so I don't have to paint very tightly with a lot of detail. And so I've got that. That's the my my feel. So I work in both um, brush and uh, palette knife. So some days wow. I want to just you know scoop up the paint and and, and just, you know just use the palette knife. And other yeah. days I will use a large brush or I. And uh, the less, you know, the bigger the brush, you don't do too much detail, which That's I right. like. So you can really, you know, just, just sort of create color. And obviously by living up here, we got wonderful, fall, you know, fall seasons. You've got the fall coming on. And uh, that's when you get those incredible golds and, and, and browns and mustard in the, in the spring. And the truly There's always something going always on. There's always something. Are you as well at heart a photographer? Actually, I am. That would yeah. be... I what, could what, see that, that in that, your... Yeah, when, when I went to design school, I did a lot of photography. Yeah. And um, it is something that I, I, I love. So I've worn out, um, you know, a couple of iPhones. I've fallen in lakes. I've done all sorts of things, <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know, I, I I just love. I've got more pictures of uh, of Europe. Yes. Every bit of the Sagrada Familia. Every you know here, there, and sure. Rome, and, and Paris, and whatnot. That, uh, because it's it's. It's, that's also a pleasure, and it's good reference material too. For sure. So I get ideas when I'm so when we're driving through the south of, of France, and you look over and, and and you look at the poppy fields. So springtime, you get the, the the green wheat, and then the beautiful red poppies jump out at you. Yeah. And it truly is. You know, it's, 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 so it's, it's, how would you advise all our friends who love wine to learn how to look? even more than they do at landscape and colors and contrast because to be a painter of your level is a lot of observation is a lot of it details is, is yeah. a lot of yeah. so what's your recommendation as far as how we should look even at a landscape well i look at shapes yes so trees are you know beautiful shapes so you, you have the uh, um, you know these these beautiful brand new palm trees, palm yeah. trees coming in. Um, yeah, so everything shapes. Just looking up the valley here, you could see a little earlier um, Mount St. Helena. So that you got the you know the the colors of the sky, the clouds, the shape of that. Yes. 
And then you've got, you know, looking lower, you've got pine trees, you've got sycamore trees, and you've got the, the vines coming through. And depending on the time of year, all those things change color. So you're looking at shapes, you're looking at color tones together. And so it becomes very graphic. Yes. And that's my, you know, my sort of, my, my direction that I go in. Because you're referring to white space and of course, yes. what you yeah explain. positive and negative spaces and and just the shapes, the way the the vines are planted on the hill over here, you know, going up the hill this way or they go across, depending on you know what what elevation they are and how much sun you know people want. So and everything's a shape. And you've elected to be more of an impressionist or realist painter. What went through in your mind? Because there's so many ways to go. Well, there is. There is. Uh, and um, one thing what I like to do is actually finish a painting within a, a reasonable amount of time. When one gets very detailed, it does take longer to do. I love to paint large. So you need to, you know, I, I, because I because you want, the, you, you want to work with the colors. You don't want to have to come back the next day and figure out, oh, what did I do yesterday? Yes. So you want you keep just moving quickly. And there's no right or wrong as to what goes down here. There's no That's right the or wrong. That's the key. And, and because everybody's a painter. And I also do teach um, um, painting classes. And I take uh, wine club members out and we go and paint here for instance most people we got to do that dear friends yeah. it's going to be our next that, endeavor because in most cases no you know most adults or teenagers have not really painted since they're in first grade and so when they come and sit down and i teach them okay so we're going to look this way this is sort of how a fan um, you know works over here and, and yes. this and that so let's let's put it down and there, and once again, there's no right or wrong. And you've just got to, you know, teach people how to start. Put the brush down and start doing something. And then just building and building. I love and, it. Uh, and it's a, it's, it's a wonderful way to, you know, sort of, um, um, well, myself to share what I do. And to share the, you know, just the beauty of, of, you know, what we have in front of us here in Napa. So painters are typically great wine drinkers. So I'm going to ask you to yeah, tell me what you feel ah. on this number 69, dear friends. Because for a painter, we're going to bring him into another world too. You know, it's very important. So Burgundy Pinot Noir, 100%, three years of age, 18 months in the bottle. Mm. How does it feel? Ah. Well, it's perfect on a day like today. It truly is. It's it's just it's ripe. It's it's you know it's just exploding. Exploding. As we saw the the cork go, you know, exactly ten feet up in the air. So it's uh, it's truly uh, you know it's quite something. Thank you. And, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go from Burgundy, dear friends, to Sonoma Coast with a 2018 Alchemy of the dreams obviously representing the artistic commitment of our world of my world which is always about creating something so cheers on this one what is your favorite color actually red Ooh, it is red here we are but i very rarely wear red red is red is your color and and how was your i on on what paint by the way do you use the most acrylic oil i love acrylic it dries very quickly which is great yeah but i love the the butterness of the oils for sure and it means that I can paint today indoor outdoor and then come back tomorrow or another three or four days and the paint is still slightly wet 
and I can then manipulate a lot, a lot, lot easier. Opposed to the acrylics, they dry up, and you've got to, you know, work with that pretty quickly. When, when you teach, as an example, you teach on oil or you teach on on acrylic? On acrylic. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot easier. Oh yeah, because it means that the clients can take uh, take the uh, you know the piece home in um, you know uh, three hours. Have you ever painted with red wine? You know something, I have in Spain. I did. Pretty fun, I right? Did. Yeah. It's, it's Red wine right. or blood of El Toro? Blood exactly. <laughs> <laughs> El sangre del toro. Yeah, I put that down actually on, yeah. on, on the on the raw canvas, and that just laid in. That's it. A, a wonderful under, undertone. It's so, so cool, right? Yeah. A friend you. of mine did um, an amazing report on the harvest. It was maybe 12, 15 years ago now. We still have probably eight to ten paintings where she did the whole background from the fermentation vats where she would take the must mm -hmm. or the, the juice or the berries or the pits and really play to prepare the canvas and then she'd paint it on top. Really cool. That's a wonderful, yeah. <clears throat> I need to do that. I, I, I opened my that. arm a little bit to <laughs> add my blood to it so yeah. it was even more powerful. And this is the time with harvest, so we've got well, we could just go in the cellar shortly. Truck, truck loads of, of wine coming in, you know, grapes everywhere and, and uh, yeah. So, cheers to that and... Thank you. I have an important question for all our friends, but first, what do you think about that Pinot? Made for you 2018 Sonoma Coast. It's a little warm because obviously we have... Yum. This amazing sunshine. Can you imagine? This is now mm -hmm. fall, and look at the weather at we the have in the heart of Napa exactly. Valley. Exactly. Mm. I love those beautiful primary flavors of cassis and mm. raspberry. What, what does it I make totally. you think of the landscape? If you had to describe it as a I don't know. It makes me want to paint right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about if we do that? I think we could do that, you know. Hey, could, with pleasure. With pleasure, we can, you know. So, let, dear friends, we up for a major treat because we about, I'm about to hand the master himself his own palette of colors. So, look at that. The easel is here. <clears throat> oh, oh. A man of nose, I love. Thank you. And this is a French easel. It folds up into a little box and it's been all around the world. And I've painted in fields, in you know, my studio. And it's just amazing. And I, so much of the work is done with that palette. Now. Yeah, so which it's, one um, shall I hand you? What would you like? Oh, you do <laughs> as you wish. We, we're getting, dear friends, a class, so maybe what would be so cool, if you don't mind, is maybe you outline, you yeah. know, how you've done the first part of it, which is so cool because, again, the master himself did a great piece during the Salvation Army auction, which got everybody going. And that this was, was nice great inspiration. It was a nice treat, and, and I just loved, loved the whole uh, experience. And, uh, and we got to and, meet. Yeah, yeah, how, how great is that? So, oil paint, I'm just gonna do a little, just put a little more cloud in here. So the thing is, I like to you know, stand back a little and see what. Well, what, I can move what's going this on. lovely table a little bit because, there we go. not that we ever forget the wines, but we need to move the wine on the side a bit. Yeah. So, and it doesn't really matter. I would, here's a, Put a little, uh, mix a little, little blue and white there. Mm -hmm. And so you just put some, get some paint on there. Looks more like a wave than a cloud. That's, but... <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Isn't it fun? Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe we'll go a little deeper See? here. Exactly. Well, just a thought. Maybe it's an invisible eye. Look at that. There you go. <laughs> and what you can do is put the whole 
use the whole surface yeah. of it. So just trowel it out there. Wow. Cool. Trowel it out. Just lay on. And the beauty is there's no right or wrong wrong way of doing it. Clouds move rapidly. You can say, well, this is what a cloud looks like. It's what you think it looks like. And how do you put the accents of what we see behind us? Let's say we want to overlay a little cloud, a little white cloud, maybe in this area. You could see on top of Mount San Elena. Well, what I've got, you've got, um, actually, it's a little darker on the top yeah. of the cloud, and it's, it's lighter underneath. In most cases, it's sort of the opposite because you've got more water in the cloud, and it's, it's grayer than the top. Yeah. But essentially, you just... It's all in the wrist. It's all in the wrist. And, and did you study uh, painting as well? I did a little and I, Patricia and I were, lived in um, Laguna Beach for a year. Yeah. And so we, um, so I painted every day, plein air painting on the beach with, with you know, the notable, uh, art, you know, artists down there, plein air painters. And we'd go down and paint on the beach. Sometimes the wind would toss the canvas onto the into the sand, and you know, go, "Oh God!" You pick it up, <laughs> and it's all. Then then it becomes mixed media. And, <laughs> Why know, not? Why not? But the seaweed here, and it was fun. It was really fun, and I got to uh, learn a lot, and uh, and just sort of start this journey. And that's really when. And it, in your happened. journey now, are you at the stage where you say, this is my style, this is what I want to be known for? Uh, not really. Okay. Not really, because I, I do tend to get a little bored. And so I love Aspens. I've spent a lot of time in the mountains. I used to do a lot of skiing and and whatnot, and uh, so I love aspens, and, mm -hmm. I, and you get the great fall colors. It's whole, you know, it's very different than on the lower lands down here. And uh, so, I do aspens. I do lovely fall colors. I do water scenes, and doing water is is amazing because here you can come in, and you can sort of just just do. We doing do water. <laughs> I love it. You know, with, with light and dark, mm -hmm. like this, right? And and so you've got. Yep, here it is. You've got you know sort of a, a rivery thing coming down here. We've got. Um, we can put rocks on the side. You know, blue rocks or whatever. But. Uh, Anyway, you can just lay that. Yeah, in yeah, for sure. And get these lovely textures and shapes. So, you know, so here, impressive. Here's a, of, here's a bit of a you know little yeah. river thing there. I don't know. And then you can put trees up and and whatnot. And, uh, so you don't draw before with a pencil or anything. No, you just no. go direct. I will. I will sketch a little, depending if it's, yeah. if it's detailed. Uh, but in most cases, I'll, I'll just come and start because uh, I've got an idea as to what I want to do. And then it's just a matter of blocking in initially, which is this is what this is. And then you've got, uh, you know, the vineyards here. Yep. You know, these are sort of little, little vineyards coming in, mm -hmm. for instance. So you accentuate the color around it, yeah. right? Yeah. So you've got a little bit of... Just the fall. So, um, as we imagine all those landscapes, where do you want to go from where you are today? Is there a direction that you're defining yourself as an artist, or you let your creativity, imagination, and maybe the Good. demand flow within it? Well, what I'm trying to do is sort of deconstruct my view. Yeah. So what I'm, I'm looking at. at the trees or whatever and try and sort of just take it down to the basic shapes of things. Mm -hmm. and then and then sort of rebuild so I can come in with new colors I can change up the colors you know it all depends on you know, the mood really yeah um, and once again I don't want to get ever um, detailed 
so mm -hmm. detailed that you you can't you know you, you spend weeks months on one painting I just I get you know I, I want to lay things down step back get Patricia's uh, you know opinion, opinion that's which great. is very, always valid always valid to, and, and is uh, she honest with you huh is and, she honest Oh yeah, because it's not easy oh, sometimes no, no, to be no, honest no. with an no, artist. No, 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 no. she's deadly honest. Great. Often too much where I go, ah, <laughs> oh, okay, fine, fine, you know. And you actually listen? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In most cases, they say, you know something, you're right. I see you. See, right. maybe the men I, from I, New Zealand are a little different. They listen yeah. better than the Latin <laughs> men of Europe. <laughs> And we see a rabbit up here and a squirrel over here in the clouds. Yeah. And Patricia has an eye for for the uh, for the zoo, you know. So <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's it's so funny. And I'll go. Oh, I didn't see that, but you're right. There's a an eagle there or something. You know, it's, it's the weirdest thing. So as you look at all your work, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of canvas, what would you like to be in a hundred years from now remembered as? And I know it's a big question. It's a big question. Um, a person that loves life, loves traveling, loves nature, and I'm pretty much self-taught with this. So it was, it's just experimentation, being able to see the masters around the world and go, okay, so that's how you did that, and this is how you did this. This is different than just looking in art books. But when you go and see, yes, see things up close. So it's still uh, important for people to oh, go to a museum, right? Oh, absolutely. Good. Because there's so much more art that you don't find in books anyway, depending where you are, from Amsterdam to, to uh, you know, um, Rome and, and Greece and Middle East and Africa. You know, even New Zealand has some artists down there. So <laughs> I know, which is pretty amazing, you know? right? Yeah, yeah. So now, who are the most uh, amazing artists to you? Who are your favorite artists of all time? Of all time. Like your own uh, masters. I've got a number, but they really are the impressionists because they were the ones, and you know, and, and that, that you know, and that include Dali, it included Picasso. These guys. At that, you know, the turn, of the turn of the century went, hey, we're not going to paint the, the queen and the king anymore. We want to just go and do what we want to do. That's right. And this is what they did. And uh, look at this. Mild. That is a, such a wonderful. So this was painting. my interpretation of the senses. So the eyes of what you see, the mouth of what you taste. There's a nose hidden. The ear is built within the eye. So I wanted here to represent the five senses from my house, which sits right here. And the symbol is the cypress tree, Beautiful. as you could see at yes, the entrance. Absolutely. So I live up here and I have the pleasure to emotionally feel sense. And so I sketched this as my vision of the surrealistic way of looking at sensory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but it's absolutely fascinating. Absolutely amazing, yeah. Well, it's fun to be able to... And it's just different. It's different, you know, what I do. But that is... Well, this is amazing ah. what you do. And, and where do you get the pleasure of teaching? And how and why teaching? Well, um, a little while back, uh, when we first came up here 11 years ago, I met some people that, that uh, were running the uh, Calistoga Ranch. Mm -hmm. And so they had a group, they were looking for a painter, somebody to come in and start teaching, um, do classes with their, with their, you know, their, their, their clients. Because families come up here, they, they, they want to bring kids, they want to, they can't, you know. So it was one thing that they could do on property we would, didn't matter if it was a, you know, a five-year-old yeah. or a 105-year-old person. And we would just go and, and paint around the, you know, the, on, on the property there. And it was marvelous. And I just sort of built that, you know, over the, over the years. Fantastic. And the nice thing is in three hours or even less than that, two hours, anybody can paint something. 
with a little little instruction, a little help with color and things, and everybody comes away with a painting this size that they have created, and it's, it's them. And it's wonderful watching, you know, every you know, even um, uh, Google employees or whoever, yeah. you know, big corporations. So you get a little bit of like anything with salespeople. You get competition between everybody. So when you are I when, love you're, it. when you're doing a meeting like that, for instance, which is so much fun. It takes them a little while to put that, put the uh, devices down, but eventually they okay, it's down because they want to start painting, and they're looking at their buddies here and this one over here, and they go, "God, I got to get moving and focus on on you know what's in front of me." And truly, I have got great photographs of of uh, of clients who have. Uh, you know that 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 have had a ball and going in they weren't sure if they're gonna they're, you know, it was gonna work for them. By the end, three hours, it was um, it was you know it, they they came away. And so you get happy. satisfaction. Oh, I get yeah. So for yeah. you, this is a great way to fulfill the enlightenment of others. Correct. I assume. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I... It's fun to teach, it isn't is it? It is fun to teach. To enlighten and people. Yeah. And to create, just like you create these wonderful yeah. lines. And people love it. We do people the same thing. What inspires you? Well, you know, just being, being, being alive for one thing and being able to, yeah. to do, have a skill that I can, I can share with people. And that's really what it, what it amounts to. It, I'm, I'm sure. And what inspires you to paint every day? What is there something you want to chant, something you want to influence, a message um, you want to give? What's your... Really, it's... Um, since I, you know, my, my career has gone down this path, yeah. which I love, it was, a, it, was, it was an easy choice. It wasn't as if it was something, you know, never really easy to do. Yeah. And I, uh, so, I'm... Um, uh, you know that, that that's the, that, that's the most wonderful thing, and yeah. having a great partner with me, and so we the go, beautiful Patricia. Yeah, and we go into the world, and we we we've lived in in Barcelona, Spain for a year or so, and over in Collier, around the you know over in yeah. um, and why yeah. Napa Valley? I mean, obviously, oh, well, phenomenal landscape, maybe. Well, it's an odd story. <laughs> The uh, location that you have in in uh, Yonville yes used to be an art gallery years ago. Oh, and it was I one of our know. art galleries. I'll be careful of your coat there. Um, and the same, and, and, and so we lived in Southern California and uh, ended up. Oh, um, thank you. Just it's good. I'm getting the artistic <laughs> pen on my jacket. I love it. But. Um, Anyway, you know, we used to come to Napa on a regular basis. Uh, you know, living in Southern California, moving up and you know, coming up here, and uh, um, I was fortunate fortunate enough to find a wonderful gallery that, you know, I love my my paintings. Yes, I do, I, I do a lot of vineyards and, and whatnot, and uh, they, um, you know, they I, I did very well with them. So. Uh, I had to keep painting, and then I'd bring them up, and then I'd get you know, off. <laughs> so you said I might as well stay. I might, might as well stay, and then 11 years ago, um, we uh, we decided to make the uh, the jump up here. Wow! And Are you excited about the jump? Oh, we haven't uh, hey, we haven't I, stopped. I gotta I we gotta haven't. I gotta have you swap. You see, yeah. we're having a painter, so I'm gonna hold this now. Yeah, yeah. And now we're gonna have a toast. So exactly. to Napa Valley for you. Oh, Napa is brilliant. brilliant. So what? Um, what's your next dream? As well, a magical painter. Magic. Well, the dreams every day. It's just really, you know, obviously getting through COVID and being able to travel again in, in yep. Europe and. Um, you know all these fun things that we all want to do, and so, but this is pretty good, uh, good place to live with the, you know, this terrible uh, disease and uh, yeah. whatnot, and so, yeah, we we need to get back to Europe and and 
and dollar parts, New Zealand and what whatnot. And, uh, so that's oh, the beauty really... with you, you could do them all. Well, uh, and, and that's true. Yeah, I can go anywhere with a with a canvas and a paintbrush, and and you know, I sit on the steps in Venice and you know, paint the gondolas all day long. You know, I know it's <laughs> you know, amazing. It, it doesn't really matter where. And, do you uh, sometimes do portrait or? No, I don't. I, Not as much. Huh? Well, figurative and portraits. Um, it's something else. It's, huh? it's a whole different uh, skill set. And in order to do it right, because it's all in the eyes. It's, you know, you, you know, a lot of anatomy and whatnot, and, yeah. uh, which I, I still do. I'm you know, sure. Um, you know, I go to classes periodically, sit in when I was living down on Laguna Beach and, you know, the, the models and, yeah, no, and it was wonderful because you do quick sketches and whatnot. And, uh, uh, but uh, to do that, uh, that's a very, you know, specific um, talent. Yeah. This is a little more broad in its Well, in its, which is amazing. Brush, so and you say. have many great galleries. We're going to mention them in the chat, dear friends. So you could all get in touch mm -hmm. with now his new title, The Master of Napa Valley. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so if you had sure. a big message, well, before maybe... Tell us what you think of this cab. Oh. So here we are from the parcel right there. So we are a few meters away mm -hmm. from this Cabernet. And we're trying the 2018, 2018. from the oh, Alchemy of Dreams. It is. I'm a big fan of this wine. Yeah. So what do you think of it? It's not too heavy. It's really very, very. Is it a moment with Patricia tete a tete? Yeah. There you go. Holding hands and under the table secretly. Yeah, I, would, I would say so. <laughs> I would say so. It's delicate. It's delicate. I like that. I, I, yeah. I, I, Thank you. So now, the big message for the world. So, you know. I always ask the very big question, what's your message to everyone around the world, maybe who have within themselves, you said everybody is a great painter, everybody's an artist. Everybody's an artist. So what do you recommend that people do to unleash that creative side of them? You've just got to stop. You've got to go outside, look at nature, Pick up a paintbrush and a canvas and just go by yourself and do something that you don't normally do. You don't have to take a photograph. You do something that is that you yourself are, are, are going to create. And it doesn't matter what it looks like because it's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. And whatever you create, it's going to be great because you've done it. And life is too short not to, not to you know follow follow a dream that may have been pushed away over the years, you know pushed away to the side because you've had family and business and you know a different direction. But it truly and it's something you can do on your holiday in the Caribbean or up in Napa or it doesn't matter where. Yeah. But you can sketch, you can you know paint fish, you can do all sorts of things. But it gets you out and it makes you really appreciate me you know nature looking at a tree and figuring oh that's sort of a weird uh, branch but hey it's it's on the tree so it must be okay right and uh, that's right <laughs> yeah and and it's, so it it's just one of those things so I observe uh, do it and go for it and go for it because life is short and it's marching on and with the covid obviously you know it's called havoc in the, in the world and this is the time to really enjoy reading, painting, being with the family. Go with the family, you know, go and buy some paints and, and go and sit outside and with all the kids and whatnot and, and just, just do it. Because there's no right or wrong. You're just participating, right? Yeah. And uh, so I think, um, you know, I think that's, that's, that's my message. Well, it's and, a great message. Uh, and I love it because you said it. Observe and participate to the yeah. world and to the theater of the world as as it is presented yes. to all of us. So. Exactly, and it's presented in a different way in different parts of, you know, everywhere. Yeah. 
you know, even your neighbors, you know, it doesn't, everybody's got a different thing going on. For sure. And uh, this just allows you to, to, and always get a bottle of Raymond. <laughs> Thank you for that. And go and paint in the afternoon. It is, it is the most fun thing. So we have to do it. Seriously, Absolutely. we are going to do it. And um, it is, it's a ball. It's and a we'll ball. do a master class, dear friends, at mm -hmm. some stage when the master is ready and has a little time for us. And we'll invite all of you or whoever wants to be part of it and, and get uh, a little bit of a great okay. feel yes. of it. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, Master of Napa Valley, Valley, thank you Cheers. so much to Thanks New Zealand, to Europe, to America. Thank you for inspiring us at all time. Well, and, you're very welcome. And creating and showing us the it's way my for pleasure. this. It's my pleasure. Magic. Yeah. Too soon, dear friends.